just uh, max speed will be 180 and rotation speed to zero so you could do something like uh, for each enemy is add the uh, where am I add to uh, rotation max speed rotation speed you add self dot rotation acceleration times dt per second so you have to multiply by dt and uh, you have to clamp the speed rotation speed to clamp which should go from zero to self dot max rotation speed should add the speed and it's a uh, set that rotation speed ah, it's not max rotation it's uh, rotation max speed okay and then rotation speed let's see if it uh, looks uh, correct yeah um, then I have to uh, switch the rotation, rot rotation speed back to zero once it reached the... Uh, that's slightly uh, complicated, I think. Yeah. If uh, angle is within... F, uh, that max rotation you set rotation speed to zero and you can do all actually since it's a container I can use this uh, enemy body that angle and I take the absolute value which is uh, if it's negative, it's set it to positive, and I just have to check if it's equal to enemy that max rotation. But I'm starting to see that uh, it should be a bit confusing. Yeah, uh, you see, you should see that. Uh, mm. you, it works in, way, in one uh, one way, but not really in the other way. Angle, 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 angle. Uh, let's see, is greater than max rotation minus one, something like this. No, well, anyway, it's not this, it's greater. Yeah, I think I'm uh, starting to get. Uh, ah, it's working now. I have a slight change in a. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I'm not quite pleased about how it works. And uh, I think I will leave it at the simple thing because I would need to think a bit more. I showed you max rotation. Okay. No. I want to keep this and. Okay, not working. Yeah, because rotation speed is zero now. Okay, so what can we say now? Here we have a little uh, robot which is uh, which has its graphics now and is able to rotate a bit so now you see why I used different sprites for the force field it's because I wanted this kind of uh, behavior and if you put this in the same uh, sprite you, ca you can't have uh, the, the enemy react to its change of um, of direction properly 
while still having the force field synchronized. You can use some tricks to say, okay, I deactivate the force field when I turn, and when I'm rotating, I finish my rotation, I reactivate it, uh, if you want everything to be in the same animation. But here, you even save some, uh, some, some uh, resources, I think. So, yeah. What uh, should I... Yeah, now a uh, day. When you, uh, you are stomping on an enemy, you're uh, killing it. But here it disappearing instantly, and you don't really want that. What I have here is... Uh, so here I have the uh, patrolling, patrolling animation. And I have another animation which is dying. Dying animation is really really simple. It's a body dead. Okay, I have to, to import frames. Re robot body dead here. The dying animation is simply falling down. I could have used uh, the same ID as um, as I used in the um, this and uh, making the falling down myself by event, but uh, for this one I was a bit lazy. I have to admit. So I just did a simple animation, and it's, uh, there's a little slight. Uh, it's not uh, an even speed. It's uh, falling down. Uh, by uh, increasing speed, so I handled the, the what I wanted to handle uh, here for the rotation. I handled it in the in the animation. The is uh, I think it's an is out. Oh no, uh, is in. I don't know. Um, okay, so what I want to do is when I'm killing an enemy, I want to switch its uh, animation to dying and then when the animation is done I destroy it so I don't want to destroy it here when I what I could do is uh, launch the animation here directly uh, the problem with that uh, thing I that is uh, kind of uh, bothering me by doing this is that I would have animation logic here and animation logic here I was able to avoid this problem with uh, this, uh, not quite, since I have animation logic in here. Okay, so let's use the same logic, but uh, I think at some point, if I had to do a really big game, I would probably prefer to use a variable, uh, switch a variable to death and then use that to trigger the, die, the death uh, animation and actually I will do it hmm. I will do it this way you will sh see the, the use a good use of uh, trigger once <coughs> dead and I already have a dead uh, everything is set so I will switch the state of the player to dead, dead equal true. On respawn, I will set the dead equals false. This is done, and then <coughs> here, if um, if the player's boolean dead is true, I will switch the animation to. Where is my animation? Set animation to die. <coughs> and then I told you before that uh, the animation was pretty forgiving with a constantly uh, triggering animation, but for my own uh, peace of mind, I will uh, use the trigger once because it makes more sense to me. Uh, okay, if one day the implementation change, uh, that, will that should always work. 
let's see if uh, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not dying. I'm locked. Okay, because uh, I probably triggered one of these. <coughs> which is a problem. Uh, which is a real problem. So, the thing I can do is if I'm not dead. Uh, here. Can do this. I don't know what is the, the best solution. But they all have their. Uh, okay, it's working. They all have their uh, own uh, advantage and inconvenience. But uh, I prefer, yeah, I prefer kind of uh, gathering all the animation logic in the same place. I tend to want to do the same with sound, but with sound it's even more complex because uh, it's really intertwined with the what happens with in the event and using uh, variables to uh, carry out the the state and change uh, every time can be a bit problematic but here i kind of like uh, how it works like this i don't like too much this and the filtering condition, but it's working. I like that all my animation are handled in one place. I can, if I have, I have uh, a problem with the uh, animation, I can, I know I have only this place to, to check to solve the problem. As I, uh, I had a problem with this situation, I could uh, understand easily that this was probably happening but something here was uh, switching the animation back to something else so it was easy to debug if I had all my animation uh, scattered over uh, the event sheet it would have been really really hard so okay now I want to handle the death animation of my enemy so I will do exactly the same kind of logic I will have a dead boolean and when my enemy dies enemy set booleans to death to true and the thing I want to also do is ignore any enemies that have a death a dead uh, state to true to false so I will do uh, boolean dead if dead if it's not dead, you consider stomping and take damage and all that. If it's dead, don't uh, don't do anything. And even no, it should be alright for this. Uh, okay, I can add something here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's alright to do it here. Set uh, speed to zero. <coughs> stop the, the movement then here in animation if my enemy's boolean dead is true I can change the animation here to animation animation set animation to die uh, did I name it to die uh, dying okay uh, die set this one to patrol okay <coughs> Die, but the same way I use trigger once here I want to use it here also now maybe that, that this one I'm always wondering if it's has its place here or in the animation section but since I'm controlling kind of uh, uh, the dying phase of the thing I prefer s letting it here and enemy or enemy animation the same way I think I will do a uh, on